Wave, wave. So I have a question, but it's geared toward you guys. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. That's ask it. <laughs> ask it when we are recording, because we're not. We don't record the pre-show and the post-show stuff. This is just something special that's fun. They go on Facebook. That gets to hang out. Yeah, it goes on Facebook. Um, but we'll do it. Uh, what's up, Josh? Ask it in about two we minutes, can't answer it in Christina. Two minutes. We well, sometimes the feed goes up and we forget. So. Okay. Never forget. Come on, let's go. Let's do this. Hold on. Okay. One. Hey, Brittany. (sighs) Feeling good. Got my run in. I bet our friend Matt Carter hates everything we say. (laughs) Like, oh, feeling good. Got your run in. Growth mindset. Ugh. He can feel bad all he wants. Yeah. Good morning. Or as our daughter says, good morgie. Good morgie, that's right. Good morgie. Check, check, hello. <clears throat> check. Check, check, check. I think that's good. I think we're check. good. Check, hello, good. We're ready to go. Good. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. Uh, the thing's not on. Day 24. We need to say what our podcast even is. We never say that in the introduction. What do you mean, what it is? Our, we don't say what our show is. A marriage show? Yeah. I don't this know. is a marriage show. I don't know what you're talking about. No worry about it. Are we oh, ready? Jeez, that's a long review. Okay. It's the story. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay. That's good. So Good morning. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? <clears throat> Call to action, audible first, and then rate and review later. Okay. Okay, ready? All right. Hello and welcome to the Anatomy of Marriage podcast. I am your host, Melanie Studley. Good morning. My name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. And today is day 24 of the 100 days of AOM Q&A. And we are glad that you are here today. First of all, we want to give a shout out to audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy of marriage. That is a a semi-sponsor of the show. And you can get a free audiobook if you use that code, audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy of marriage. And something that we talk about all the time is audible books because they have helped us create who we are today. Mm -hmm. So, um, good morning. Good morning. If you're new to this show, welcome. We have over 200 episodes regarding all sorts of different marriage topics, so you can learn all the things you need to learn, and it's free. That's right. What's up, TJ? Good morning, buddy. Good morning. We are also live on Facebook and Instagram right now. That's who we're talking to, and it's awesome, and you can always join us around 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time Mm -hmm. uh, there. Monday through Friday. And we do four things, sometimes five things, every single time. We start out with a prayer. We share a past gratitude, something that I'm thankful for that Melanie did and vice versa. We do a review of the day and then we dive straight into and, uh, listener questions. And also we like to share what we're listening to podcast wise and audiobook wise. I am still on a Mel Robbins book called to Take Control, Take of, Control your of Your Life. And <clears throat> it's awesome. She has so much insight. I'm almost completed with Rachel Hollis's Girl, Wash Your Face. Right. Heard some great things about that book too. So, okay, we're going to dive in. Let's pray. Thank you, God, Creator, for your blessings. Thank you for today. Thank you for another opportunity that we get to uh, just um, have a growth mindset, to be try to be forward thinking, and try our best in all that we do. Thank you for our listeners. Thank you for our family. Amen. Amen. I am thankful for how much you've grown since we've moved. Like oh, like waistline. Yeah, beer you're just drinking. Huge. <laughs> no, I am. Uh, I'm just thankful that. Well, and I, and it's kind of like, I'm a really relentless person. Like I'm a terrier, like a dog, you know, like Patty, oh, wow. our dog. That's why you and Patty didn't get along. We <laughs> yeah, just... we're two the same. <laughs> like if, if I'm stuck in a, a house, I can't get out, I'll dig at the door frame, right? Like, right. And I'm like that for personal growth and you're married to me and we are in a relationship. And so I can understand that that would be really annoying. Like you must be like, oh my gosh, please stop telling me to change every freaking day of my life. But you're so, uh, so thank you. Oh, oh, I Lis- love you. Listening to audiobooks is my coping skill. <laughs> I'm sure you've got to have a lot. No, thank you. That's sweet. Uh, I am thankful that you do push people in that way. I think that we were drawn to each other <clears throat> somehow. I knew what I needed and something in you uh, I, I needed. A lot of things in you I needed, right? What are you smiling for? That song came into my head. I guess you just what I need it. I don't even, well, no, it, it I can, even know that song. It can be true because I do best when I have tasks, when I'm motivated and when I have to be accountable. Sometimes I just get pissed at you and be like, dude, girl, leave me alone yeah. kind of thing. Or can't we well, just don't live? get sidetracked. I'm just, that's my gratitude. Okay, so I'm thankful that you're thankful. Thank you. That's my thankfulness. And okay, number, oh boy, 
Okay, review of the day, sorry. <laughs> okay, this review of the day is an actual email, and it's long. And when I read this son of a gun email, I was like blown away, like yeah. literally blown away. So it, like, it's geez. a story, um, <clears throat> but we got permission to share it. We're keeping it anonymous. But this is, um, we really think it's worth sharing and wanted to. Okay, so here. I'm going to read it. So here we go. I wanted to share a story with you guys and how you have affected my life. My wife and I were having communication issues since our daughter arrived two years ago, or can I say that we had no real communication. It all blew up in March with a three-day fight about how I don't communicate and I complain all the time and am negative. I really identify with Melody and my family of origin. So I thought, to save my, I thought that to save my marriage, I knew that I needed to be more positive, encouraging, and just a good husband. Because I grew up in a family without communication skills or communicating with negativity, I had to start from the ground up. I started looking into books and podcasts to learn about communication in marriage while waiting to start counseling. I listened to several different shows before I came across yours. I started listening to AOM and quickly felt at home. It was a real and communicated it was real and communicated in a way that was applicable. So on my way to being a better husband, I started sending my wife text messages with gratitude, hope, and goals, messaging every morning to see how she was doing and just being present. In short time, she started responding with hers as well. She also started listening to the podcast separately and was enjoying them as well. We were doing really well as a couple for about one month and then last weekend hit. My wife had listened to the episode, Tools of Marriage, Compassion and Forgiveness, Healing from an Affair episode with Rob and Jackie that we did. And she said that she wanted me she wanted to talk to me about emotional affairs. She wanted me to listen to the episode before we talked. As I listened at work, I began to feel a knot in my stomach as what we were going to talk about. I got home from work and we sat down to talk. She admitted, she admitted that she was having a physical affair with a co-worker for nine months. Wow. I was devastated and crushed. What did I do to deserve this? Was it better sex than with me? We have been doing so well. Does she love him? The normal questions that run through your head in the moment after that news. My wife was completely honest and answered every, every question that I had, no matter how embarrassing, hurtful, or shameful it was, which is very courageous to be raw in that way. After listening to the inspirational story in the podcast, I had hoped that we could work our way through this. We both decided that we wanted to maintain our marriage. That day, I fully forgave my wife. I believe that this was a gift from God that I cannot explain. Although there are times where I still feel hurt, I have this odd inner peace and calm with me after this. We have spent all weekend discussing our past, what we want a relationship to be, expectations in the relationship, and just really deep and vulnerable conversation. This was the first time that we've had a conversation like this, and it was really intimate being in this space. It seems that the affair was put in our life to bring us together in a way that I couldn't have imagined. I honestly believe that God put that episode in front of us to allow my wife to have the courage to come clean and for me to have the heart to forgive her. We continue to listen to your podcast and learn more each day. We have a lot of work to do and are excited, oddly, about going forward after this affair. I just wanted to tell you guys how you have affected, <clears throat> affected our life in a tremendous way. Keep up the good work, and I hope that you can continue helping couples to make it through their crazy adventure. Whoa. Yeah, that's an awesome... Big time. Uh, so thankful that you shared that story with us and that our interview with Rob and Jackie was helpful in the way that it mm -hmm. was. Yeah. Because um, those are hard stories to share, but they're real. They happen to people all the time everywhere, and mm -hmm. when there aren't stories like that being told, people don't have hope. People mm -hmm. don't have a, where, a place that they can turn. So thank you so much for sharing that with us and allowing us to share it with everybody. Um, yeah, wow, that is a big one for, for this. And yeah. uh, Rob and Jackie, because I'm friends with him, he's also <laughs> training to be an MFT, and this person reached out and asked if he could contact Rob, and Rob said, of course, and I think that Rob and Jackie hooked up with this couple too to get other yeah. support. And that is what is all, it's all about. Mm -hmm. We talked about an episode a couple of days ago. The power of community. The power of community. And obviously this is a virtual community, but this is our reality and this is how we connect now. And it's a good thing. Of course, in person is good too, but this yeah. is a great start because I guarantee you, once we get to know each other here in this space virtually, when we do hang out in person, it's like, old friends yeah what's up let's <clears throat> i mean chicago aom event was like oh the gosh, best because that's, that's what it was it was virtual relationships yeah. i was i was nervous about that but like everybody that came so to fun. it was just like hey we're chill we're yeah. friends so uh, but anyway awesome. so that's the story thank you for letting us read that it's it was long but it was amazing mm -hmm. um, okay so uh sorry sidetracked here so we we told christina that we would answer a question so we're going to do an okay. instagram live question here so all right christina here we go 
So as someone who's really found interest in the Enneagram and seen the awesome benefits from it in my own marriage, what would you say has benefited you the most from learning about this tool? And also, how has the Enneagram impacted your everyday life together? Mel, you're an eight and Seth a nine, correct? I'm a seven, eight she, wing. Yeah, she's a seven, I'm a nine, I don't know what wing, but <clears throat> I think that it has, when, when we, this is how it has it affected me mostly. When Melanie did the tests with our kids, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, now I know how the kids are thinking. And mm -hmm. it makes a lot of sense that Mariner is like Melanie, so I know how to in interact with Mariner. Hattie is like me, so you know how to interact. And I know how to interact because I can give her what she wants in a really mm -hmm. good way and mm -hmm. nurture and foster her in a good way. And then Tuff, our middle kid, is a four, mm -hmm. I think, right? He's the individualist. So, so that is different and extraordinary helpful to understand <laughs> it, it is yeah and it helps us so I think it helps interpersonally for for me it, it, it that tool helped me understand other people more than understanding myself mm -hmm. I believe yeah I think for me there's a, a handful of things that it did so understanding uh, and I would highly suggest listening to sleeping at last that Enneagram podcast where the guy writes songs mm -hmm. that's been one of the most insightful things he always he also always interviews Chris Huertz mm -hmm. Huertz um, the Enneagram guy, so that's really helpful, but don't, don't touch the screen, I can't think when you do that. Uh, so the things that stuck out to me as being really beneficial from listening or learning about the Enneagram are for myself that yes, you aren't weird, you're not broken or messed up because you always want something different. Mm -hmm. You're never okay with being in one spot. It feels like the worst thing ever when you don't have something to do. talking about yours? Myself, mm. yeah. Um, and when I realized that that's like a type and lots of people feel that way and there's a song about it and the song is flipping amazing, mm -hmm. um, it made me feel like when I felt that like kind of frantic, like I have to do something, I feel like I'm going to cry if I don't do something I love, I was like, oh, that's normal. Mm -hmm. And when I feel that sensation <laughs> now, I go, totally normal. Right. And I no longer feel like that. The urgency, the the um, ne necessity for the urgency has changed. If that makes sense, mm. I don't now. I don't realize that I actually have to do something. I just realize that that feeling is going to be there, yeah. and that it's a cyclical thing. Whatever. So that's one thing. It, nope. No. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so that's one part of it. The second part of it, like Seth said, for understanding how others are behaving and why and what motivates them. So for Seth, when. Uh, the other thing that's cool about that too is that I know a few nines and they're husbands of friends of mine so it's helpful because hmm. I go oh Sean Carrie's husband my sister's husband sure. brother-in-law is a nine and so it's helpful for me to see like oh they do these things similarly and Carrie says this about Sean and blah blah, blah. and she says just mean things about him I'm just kidding <laughs> um, but it's really uh, that's really helpful to to kind of go oh this other person is also this number and here's the similarities, and it helps me also to know what matters to Seth. He wants to feel, you know, like valued in a very particular way. I want to feel freedom. Let's do everything. That's what makes me feel great. But you feel great when you're helping people. When you're like, so it's, it, that's the kind of thing that helped me the most with the Enneagram, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Someone says, Thanks, guys. OMG, yes, sleeping at last is the best. Nine will be out soon. I can't wait for Nine to be out, and I'm so probably make frustrated me cry. that it's not. Shoot, the seven song makes me cry every time, really? and the two song because it's Pamela, and it's my mom and my sister, and, it, yeah. and I'm like, it, it's just like Pamela. <laughs> like, I really, it gets me literally every time. That's funny. Okay, okay. we're going to go Good to questions. the next question. <clears throat> if the computer works. Okay, so... The other day, during one of your podcasts, you were both talking about previous sexual partners that you both had before you got married to each other. I was surprised at how casually you both talked about it and that you didn't seem to have any regrets. What are your feelings about premarital sex in general? What age do you think it is appropriate for young adults to experiment sexually? I know too many people in family, in my family who have serious regrets and in some cases ongoing consequences for having premarital sex or living with someone before marriage. Thank you for your thoughtful responses. I have so much to say about this. I do too, <clears throat> and I'm scared to say it. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid. So the first thing, I, I don't have any thoughts on the what age do you think it's appropriate for young adults to experiment sexually. That is like we can't, that's like what age is it appropriate for um, someone to have enlightenment. It's all, it, it's all different for every person depending on their growth, ex, like their experience growing up. Do they have trauma? Where do they live? Do they have ed, education? Like all of those factors play a part in it. Let me, let me say one thing. So we're, we may not give the answer that people like, and I don't think, I think that this 
is an area that is gray and it is not going to, we are not going to give a black and white answer that a large part of the Christian community would find sufficient Talk to, yourself. to be comfortable. Yeah, maybe, right? maybe, who knows. Um, but I do, right, I want to talk about it. It says, <clears throat> I have to read it as I answer it. So the other day it says we talked about uh, previous sexual partners and we were both um, casual about it. That's because we've talked about this a lot. We've processed um, our past relationships a lot and we're only casual about it because we've done the work, if that makes sense. Do you agree with that? Yeah, it doesn't hurt my feelings when, <laughs> and it's not like, <laughs> oh God. It's not like if we see somebody, like, okay, when we go back to, you know, uh, South Carolina or whatever, I'm not going to be like, totally was with her, mom. <laughs> that's stupid. That's that, weird. That's weird. And, of course, she doesn't do it yeah. either, right? And But, you know, we can maybe safely assume, it's like, that was my girlfriend for a long time, so, you mm -hmm. know, what do you think happened, right? <laughs> or, you know, st stuff like that. So, it's not it's not uncomfortable to us, to some people, it may be, and, it, and and certainly it was early on in our marriage, yeah. I think, right? But yes. we've almost been married for 15 years, so mm -hmm. there's some, there is some casualness to it. Yes, and you write in this question, um, it doesn't seem like we have any regrets. So I want to clarify, I looked up the definition of regret um, because I think that it's important to think more critically about how we're thinking the about the thing? word regret. It says, regret is a negative <clears throat> cognitive emotional state that involves blaming ourselves for a bad outcome, feeling a sense of loss or sorrow at what might have been, or wishing we could undo a previous choice that we made. For young people, regret, although painful to experience, can be a helpful emotion. The pain of regret can result in refocusing and taking corrective action or pursuing a new path. However, the less opportunity one has to change the situation, the more likely it is that regret can turn into rumination and chronic stress that damages the mind and body. So, mm, That's big. This is the analogy that I came up with. <clears throat> Should I regret when I am 35 the homework I did when I was in fifth grade that I didn't get right? Should no. I regret that? No. Or is it just where I was when I was in fifth grade trying to do math? Right? Like, we don't need to regret choices that we've made. It would be different if in fifth grade I was like, oh, I don't want to cheat on this test. Oh, I cheated on the test. I didn't care in fifth Ruined. grade. I, it, like, it's a different, I think it's your motivation is what causes regret. So if you are saying to yourself, the church says I can't have premarital sex. The church says I can't have premarital sex. Oh, I had premarital sex. You can regret that because that choice was in conflict with what you actually wanted if you didn't want to have premarital sex. Mm -hmm. When I was dating people before we got married, I didn't have, that wasn't in my mind. Like, mm -hmm. um, I did, and I don't think that it was a bad thing that it wasn't in my mind. It just wasn't in my mind. Right. And um, so I'm not ever going to look back at my story and be like, man, I just wish I hadn't done whatever because it, it wasn't... A, uh, do you know what I'm saying? What I'm so saying? I know what you're saying. And when I was on the treadmill this morning, I was thinking about this question. Like, how am I going to answer it? What, you know, will I offend people or whatever? Or just put too much out there? Which is not a real concern of mine. But I, the, the idea came like, you know, Paul says, and I don't know where, some book of the Bible. Uh, everything is permissible. But not everything is beneficial. Right. So, okay. Was it beneficial that I had sex with people in high school and outside of high school did it emotionally kind of mess me up for a, a little time period did i treat people in a very um, kind of self-serving way yes i regret that that's what i regret and on the on the same thing like now i, I think i've told you this before and not to be weird or anything but like what was the big deal? I should have had sex with a lot more people. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did talk about that. But... I know that sounds totally stupid, but it's like, yeah, in fifth grade, I should have cheated on my math test. But if I had cheated on my math test, that would have illustrated like what kind of mindset I had that maybe would have taught, uh, put me down this path. If I would have like indulged and had sex with more people, that would have probably not been helpful. Like I, Then I would have just continued to objectify women or just like... You know, hurt a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? And that it's 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 permissible. It's not beneficial, mm -hmm. right? Do I think, oh God, bro, this is the biggest sin ever. I'm a piece of trash. I'm a slut. I'm a whatever. That's not helpful, right? Mm -hmm. And that is what the church has done in mm -hmm. like all kinds of shaming and just wacky stuff. So again, this is not a black and white answer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how we're going to address it with our kids, 
I truthfully, I don't know. Why'd you bring it up then? <laughs> because it's just out there. I, I just I, thought it was funny that I you said, "How am I gonna address this?" I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm not. I'm not sure yet. You know, probably. I yeah. Mary was talking about getting a phone. I'm like, you know, buddy, I don't think you're ready for a phone. You know, what are we talking about phones? <laughs> it's an analogy to the thing. So, okay, um, but keep I, on going. the thing that stands out to me What's the up, most Paul? in this question is that. I believe that um, if I, again, I'm going to go back to this analogy that if, if it was like in my heart to not have premarital sex and I did, that, yes, I could regret that. Right. But it was not in my heart to not have premarital sex. I didn't care. Not because I was a terrible sinner. No, I not just, that you didn't care. It wasn't ingrained in you and yeah. taught. And well, in you, fact, you it was. You cared. No, I didn't care because it was, I was taught that it doesn't matter what you do. God loves you. Mm. Be a good person. Basically, that's right. what I was taught. Do things for other people. Be helpful. Be kind. Don't be a total a hole. Right. And if you happen to get pregnant before you're married, we'll still love you. Yeah. That's what I was taught. So I didn't actually quit scrolling. I can't focus when you scroll. Um, but one of the things I really wanted to point out in this, again, um, our regrets should eventually become things that we accept. So mm -hmm. if we can't change it and we just ruminate on the fact that oh I wish I hadn't, I wish I hadn't, I wish I hadn't, it will cause us damage mentally, physically, emotionally down the line. So what's the good in, in holding on to our regret? And mm -hmm. that does not mean do whatever you want, have no care, don't think about what the outcomes might be. That is not what I'm saying, so don't misinterpret that. Mm -hmm. But I do think that um, <clears throat> we can accept our regrets well if we have them. I don't have very many regrets in that regard. Right. Um, I regret being mean to Seth. I regret being like bossy and weird, but... <laughs> But yeah, but I, and I can regret those, but I can yeah. also accept them. Yeah, that's a good question. I would love more conversation around that, <clears throat> emails and stuff. So, okay, all right, here we go. I don't know what is wrong with me, if it's postpartum or if I'm being crazy, but I have these, been having these feelings that my husband is cheating on me. He has not done anything and I have not found anything, but the feeling won't go away. He has always been nice to everyone and makes friends with both men and women and I've never felt insecure about it in the past. But lately I've been feeling suspicious about him. I have noticed him teasing a certain coworker, someone who, are, who we are both friends with. It bothered me so much that I asked him if, he, if I could look at his phone. He got super defensive and was mad at me. His reaction made me feel even worse. I feel like if you have nothing to hide, then you would not need to keep your password private. I do not want to have this feeling that I need to look at his phone. I don't like it, and I don't want to do that. But I also feel insecure with the way he reacted. We have a toddler who is currently sleeping with us, so being intimate is very hard. I am also tired all the time, so I don't know if I'm feeling this way because we are not spending quality time or if my feelings have some truth to it. I am scared to bring up this again to him because I don't know how to make these feelings go away. Thank you. Hmm. So yes, having a toddler in your bed is part of it, I would assume. Not part of, because you're tired, that's what I mean. Yeah. Um, okay. I would never I'll... sleep with a toddler. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> what about your postpartum stuff? I can't speak to that. You can. How yes. It, like literally changes. You. Yes, when we so if you haven't heard season one of our podcast, go listen to it. That's a big part of our podcast or our, our story, where when Seth confessed, like if you don't know this story, you really should go listen to season one. Um, all of everyone listening, but Seth confessed to like having he was lying and looking at pornography right, and I think Tuff was two weeks old when he confessed to me, and I like lost my flipping mind and um, went into acute depression. And so during that time, I was postpartum, like the chemicals of just having a baby and nursing and all of that are just like, you know, screwing you up to the max. And then on top of that, you have like, he just confessed all this stuff. And I was adamant that he was still doing it all the time. He, w he probably was cheating on me. He probably had a crush on his coworkers. He was probably texting them inappropriate things. But I was again, like that terrier I said earlier, I was like determined to find it. Mm -hmm. I was checking his phone. I was checking his computer. I was telling him that he was doing bad things. And it was so detrimental. Um, so detrimental in so many ways. Do you think you had a gut feeling about something like this person <clears throat> says that she may? I will say this. I could have turned the wind blowing the wrong way into a gut feeling because mm -hmm. I wanted it to be true. Right. Um, so I'm not saying that your gut feeling, ignore your gut feeling. I am not saying that. I do want to say though, that there's a few things, there's a few things to really deeply consider and address in this email, in this conversation. Um, 
One is, let's switch it and make this the analogy. What if we're driving in a car together and I'm like, you're going to crash the car. I'm driving. What? Get out of the, get out of the driver's seat. I'm driving because you're going to crash. You're going to crash. I know you're going to crash. Mm. How do you feel about driving the car ever again? You drive because I don't want to deal with yeah. you. But have you, have you crashed our car before? No. No. Did you crash it last week? I don't think so. No, you don't think so. But right. someone is telling you who you are supposed to be in love with that you're going to crash the car every flipping day, mm -hmm. so freaking let me drive. Give me the password to your phone. Right. right? So, okay, I want to I want to slow this one down because she's just having a feeling, right, about this. So listening to your gut and then either being in your heart or your, your gut or your head is a really hard place for me. So I, I want to like... What do you mean it's a hard place it's for a, you? I, I grew up saying... Oh no, you don't need that. Oh no, don't think that. Oh, whatever. I'm like, well, my, I want to do this, but people around me are saying not. So I listen to my head too much and other people and don't follow my gut, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not a good person to listen to when I say follow your gut because I've had such a hard time. But the times that I have, I think have really worked out. So if she really is having a gut feeling, then okay, let's talk about this more because Anybody is capable of anything. I, I hate to say that, but that's just a reality. Mm -hmm. And well, you, it, uh, this isn't gonna be helpful. Well, it's 50-50. He could be or he couldn't be. You're thinking crazy or you're not. I don't know, sorry. <laughs> so that sucks. That's not good advice, right? But, I, okay, slow it down. I think postpartum depression is definitely a factor. Being tired is definitely a factor. And your kid's sleeping in your bed. Those are all things that are going to only exacerbate any feelings that you have. So first, drop the idea that he's cheating or doing something nefarious. Get a hold of the idea or, or get a hold of the issues of postpartum, kids sleeping in the bed, and being tired at the time. I guarantee you when these quiet their voices down, this other voice mm -hmm. will quiet down. And the, 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 the truth or whatever, what you're looking for will rise to the top and you'll mm -hmm. figure it out. So. Yeah. Take care of these things first before you jump to like, oh, this mm -hmm. is the worst conclusion yeah. uh, ever. Well, and part of the reason I was bringing up all this stuff before is like when we, especially when we were dating, um, I remember just being like, yeah, Seth totally, he's just totally checking that girl out. And I was convinced. I had a total gut feeling in that moment that you were the worst. You're totally cheating on me. You're not a good boyfriend. I probably should break up with you. And it was because I was focusing on the wrong thing. And so asking your partner demanding to check their phone um, demanding the password to their phone they might only be keeping the password away from you because you are showing them that you don't trust them I'm not saying you've done the wrong thing your thoughts are bad you're dumb I'm not saying any of those things I'm saying I have behaved that way and I can now see in retrospect it's not super helpful um, this is something that like just say like imagine if I said to you today I think that you're doing something inappropriate. Give me the password to your phone, please, so that I know I can trust you by checking all of That's not trust. Mm -hmm. That's babysitting, right? Oh, yeah. That's not trust. That's true. Trusting is that I trust that you're not going to do something bad. Not I'm going to watch you and make sure you don't. Mm -hmm. Those are two different things. And and it's like um, starting, it's like a conflict seeking, not that I'm saying you're not conflict seeking, but it's like conflict seeking behavior where a kid does something naughty to get attention. That's how that feels. It, mm -hmm. it feels like bad. I don't want my kid to do something dumb so that I'll talk to him. Why don't you just come up and give me a hug? I'll talk to you, right? But um, building trust doesn't work that way. Building trust is not show me every single thing you do, mm -hmm. and then I'll trust you when right. you do it for oh, X amount of months. Or, or you pass, pass or, or fail, fail. yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and so it exacerbates the chasm between you two. It It's pointing out the bad stuff you don't want. It's Focusing on the void, the thing that's scary, the thing that isn't mm -hmm. going to be generative and helpful. Right. So that's why I'm saying, I, I don't think you're being bad or dumb or stupid or whatever. I have done everything we're talking about. Right. Here. And I want to also pay, pay pay attention to the postpartum stuff. If you're on medication for that, that can also kind of, not kind of, mess with your chemicals in a good way <laughs> and a bad way. So yeah. again, when I calm, hold on, calm down the beehive over here and then don't worry about the mega giant tree that the beehive is in you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. it's like okay there's a beehive in a tree and you're worried about the tree rotting and dying and falling on your house which what you should be focused on is all the bees that are flying around stinging right your face. now stinging your face yeah. right okay we're at 27 minutes so we gotta wrap this mug up hold on um, there was something else I was gonna say Okay. Uh, oh and but also make sure that you're putting into practice don't you can't just erase you have to replace so put into practice things that are going to be 
uh, very helpful for your mental state. So things like you do need a lot of sleep. You need more sleep than you're probably getting. I would suggest maybe getting that toddler out of your bed, not just for intimacy, but seriously just for sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I'm not judging whether or not you have a kid in your bed. I cannot sleep with children. I despise it. They're lovely, but I don't want to sleep with them. Every um, time that we've slept, had to sleep with kids in the bed, like in Europe, it happened a couple times. And then like before we leave on vacations uh-huh. or like at Great Wolf Weird, Lodge, yeah. it's like crazy. It's, the worst. it's, a, it's, it's, it's so bad that it's funny. Yeah. So, and I think, I think people very, very much underestimate the, how the lack of, how lack of sleep affects their cognitive abilities like hugely hugely affects it look up some research about it and get more sleep eat food that you know is good for you don't over caffeinate or do things you know stuff like that so be aware of all the other things too because that was stuff i wasn't being aware of mm-hmm. and it I, wish, I wish i had a resource about postpartum depression but this is a perfect segue if you this lady goes to audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy of marriage get a free ebook on it like Auto, audio, audio 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 book I don't know. Do you know any audio Well, I, I know of the podcast, um, the the baby hour. No, the birthing hour. There's there are podcasts about it. My friend was on. I think it was the birth. Hour. I don't, was, just look up like baby podcasts. Yeah. Depression, and you'll find it. Okay, but, so um, go yeah. check that out. Thank you. If this has been helpful, go rate and review the show. I think we're like maybe like six ninety nine reviews. We're right so now, close to seven hundred. Let's <laughs> let's want. let's bust up and open seven hundred, y'all. And uh, we may do a show on the weekend. Maybe not. I would ask this person also pray about it. Mm-hmm. Be in prayer. Be, Be in, in prayer, prayer with your partner about with it. Your partner. Share That's your right. feelings and say, "Gosh, this is what I'm feeling." But share the feelings without blaming. Be like. This might sound so silly, but I feel like you're cheating on me, and I hate that I feel that way because I love you dearly. Don't yeah. don't be like you're cheating on me. Probably right. give me your password. Yeah. Um, there's a way to do this well, and prayer is an excellent way to do that. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, it just came up. I know it's scattered in the call to action, which you're not supposed to do. But anyway, <laughs> go rate and review the show if it's helpful to you. Hopefully, we may see you tomorrow. If if we don't talk over the weekend, we're chilling. We're taking a break. So you take a break too. We'll see you back on Monday, if not Saturday or Sunday. We love you guys. We love you. All right. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. I just made a kiss face to the thing. Sorry, I feel weird now. Don't feel weird. (laughs) Thanks. Why am I talking about this? Thanks, guys. For. Oh, wait a minute. I think having those discussions are 100% healthy. You can see your spouse's evolution and appreciate who you are. With yeah, that's true. Because what? What are we? What are we gonna erase our? past with our spouse oh yeah hold on so no we're not christina said she's gonna get a wor- what words make you cry from the song on number two because it is so good is she still on i don't know maybe but it's the one um what is it what it's though. it makes me so happy because it's my neighbor my best friend's number yeah. okay all right guys love you have an amazing weekend i'll never know but well she can <laughs> email so i'll never know maybe but. she's gone all right bye guys bye um, what Finish.